Hello and welcome to a new video on the official Crypto2 YouTube channel in the Basics of Cryptology series. I want to have a look at the avalanche effect. In the first part of the video, I want to show you what is the avalanche effect. Then I want to show you the avalanche effect with classical ciphers. After that, I will show you the avalanche effect with modern ciphers. And finally, we want to have a look at the avalanche effect with cryptographic hash functions. As with all of my videos of the Basics of Cryptology series, I will first have a look at where we are in the cryptology. And as we know, cryptography is the art of making ciphers and cryptanalysis is the art of breaking ciphers. And in this video, we want to have a look at cryptology, cryptography, modern cryptography and symmetric modern cryptography. But the avalanche effect cannot only be seen with symmetric modern ciphers, it can also be seen with modern cryptographic hash functions and actually we should have modern cryptographic hash functions in parallel to symmetric and asymmetric modern cryptography. Now let's have a look at what is the avalanche effect. And I found a really nice definition of the avalanche effect in the English Wikipedia and the Wikipedia says that the avalanche effect is a desirable property of cryptographic algorithms, typically block ciphers and cryptographic hash functions, wherein if an input is changed slightly, the output changes significantly. So what does this mean? That means that when I change, for instance, a single bit in the input of a cryptographic hash function or a block cipher, the output changes significantly. And that means that every single bit of the output of these functions depends on every bit of the input. And we also know the so-called strict avalanche criterion, which was developed by Webster in Tavares, and it's a formalization of the avalanche effect. And they say that, and they say that when we change a single bit in the input of the functions, each output bit changes with a probability of 50%. And here's an example of a hash function where we have a hash of 101 and we have the hash of a changed pre-image where we changed only one bit to 100. And then we see here two different hash values and each bit here changed with a probability of 50%. For instance, this bit here changed, this bit here changed and so on. And total of 50% of all the bits of the hash value changed. Now let's have a look at real-world cryptographic ciphers and hash functions and the avalanche effect. But before we have a look at the modern ciphers, we first have a look at the avalanche effect with classical ciphers. And here we will see that classical ciphers do not have a good avalanche effect or they show a weak avalanche effect. And as an example, I have here a look at the Visionaire cipher, which also shows a weak avalanche effect. So what did I do here? I made an example. First, I encrypted the same text, and in both cases, I used the classic Visionaire cipher with two slightly different keys. If you do not know what the Visionaire cipher is, you should have a look at my introduction video on the Visionaire cipher. And with the first encryption I did, I used the keyword secret, and then I changed the keyword at one position to secret with an A instead of an E at the second position here of these E's. And I encrypted the same plain text using these two different keys. And then I made a comparison of both and looked how many changes I had. And in the first case, I had this input here. This is a test of the avalanche effect. And this gives me this ciphertext here. And then I did the same input. This is a test of the avalanche effect. And I used the second keyword. And as we can see, only at the position of the A here, so it's here, 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 and here, the ciphertext changed. And the number of different letters in total is five. And we can compute the difference of these two ciphertexts. And the difference in percent is 16%. And this is very bad with respect to the avalanche effect, since we should see a difference of about 50% here. And as we can see, both outputs are very similar due to only a minimal change in the key. To change the output significantly, we have to change many letters in these two keywords. And that says that classical ciphers in general 
and the Visionaire Cypher in particular has a very weak avalanche effect. And modern ciphers and hash functions should show a strong avalanche effect. So let's have a look at a modern cipher. For a modern cipher, I had a look at the Advanced Encryption Standard, or short AES, which shows a strong avalanche effect. And I also made an example with the AES, and I encrypted two 128-bit words using AES, and in both cases I used AES 128 with the same key, so I set the key of the AES completely to zero, and then I had these two different plaintexts. I have a plaintext completely set to zero, and I have a plaintext where I changed only one bit, the bit at this position here, and then I had a look at the output ciphertext. And the AES 128 gave me two different ciphertexts, and everything I show here is shown with hexadecimal values, and I marked all positions in the second ciphertext that are different compared to the first ciphertext. And this looks here right now that everything is different, or nearly everything is different, but that's not true. Of course, only the hex values are different, but some of the bits, of course, are the same, but this is not reflected here in this visualization. And because of that, I computed the Hamming distance between these two ciphertexts, and the Hamming distance is a number of different bits. So where in the first ciphertext is a zero, and in the second ciphertext is a 1, that adds 1 to the Hamming distance, and the other way around, where here is a 1 and here is a 0, it also adds to the Hamming distance. And the Hamming distance of both output ciphertexts of both AES runs have a Hamming distance of 70. And this means that there is a difference in percent of 55.6%. So every second bit is different on average. And that means that both outputs are very different despite of only a minimal change in the input. And this is a strong avalanche effect that AES shows here. And when I go back to the Visionaire cipher, where we have only a very weak avalanche effect, we can see why this is needed in modern ciphers. With classic ciphers, we can, for instance, use optimization techniques to further improve our key or our analysis to come closer to the original plaintext. But with AES, since every bit change changes around 50% of the bits, we cannot use heuristics to come closer to the right key. And the same applies to hash functions, as we will see on the next slide. Here we have the secure hash algorithm 256, or short SHA 256, which also shows a strong avalanche effect. And what did I do here in my example? I hashed two 128-bit pre-images using SHA 256, and I also only changed a single bit. So in the first run, we had the pre-image everything set to zero, and we got this hash value here. And then in the second run, I changed only one bit at this position here, and our output hash changed significantly. And it also looks here as if everything changed, but it's the same with SHA-256 as with the AES shown before. I only show here the different hex values, and some of the bits, of course, are similar. But since one bit at a position here is enough to change the hash value, this is all red here. And due to that fact, I also computed the Hamming distance between these two hash values, and the Hamming distance was 135. And the difference of these two hash values in percent was 52.73%. So on average, every second bit changed. And that means that both outputs are very different, despite of only a minimal change in the input. This shows that the SHA-256 hash function also shows a strong avalanche effect. Now let's have a look at Crypto2, and we have some really nice components in Crypto2 that can visualize the avalanche effect, for instance, of modern cryptographic encryption algorithms like AES, and it also can show the avalanche effect of each round of the cipher. So let's have a look at this. I'm here now in Crypto2, 
and I want to show you how you can have a look at the avalanche effect by yourself, for instance, with the AES cipher. And to do so, I first create a new workspace by clicking on the new button here. And I close the start center. And now let's search for the AES cipher. Drag and drop it on the workspace. And now we need some inputs. We need a plain text or a cipher text. For that, I use a text input. And we want to work with hexadecimal values here. So we need a string encoder. No, uh, it's wrong, a string decoder. And we set this to by the settings hexadecimal. And then we connect this here to the text input here or the iCrypt2 stream input of plain or cipher text. And then of course we want to visualize something, so we need a string encoder to convert from a byte array or from a stream to hex values also. And then we have here a text output. Now we give everything some names and make some space here. So this here is our plain text and I think it has not been too big. Then we need a key and I name this plain text one and key one. And then the key, we also need a string decoder here. And the key is, I think, here. This is a key, yes. Then we change the AES to encrypt, electronic code book zeros. It can be none, the padding mode. And then we need a plain text. And AES has a block size of 128 bits. So we need, for instance, 00. zero. This is one byte. And then we make eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we need this 16 times. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we have here now sixteen. Ah, that's, <laughs> I made this binary here, so we can also switch this to binary. We can copy this to this here and then execute the AES. And I think we have too many bits, so we only need, uh, give me a second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we need 16. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And the same here. And this is binary and this also has to be binary. And now we change this also to binary. And now we see the plain text, everything set to zero, encrypted with the key, everything set to zero, gives us this ciphertext here. So this is our ciphertext one. And we want to have a look at the avalanche effect. So we copy just everything here. And then this here is our plain text two and our key two. And of course, when I use the same key and uh, plain text, and this here should be ciphertext too, then of course this should be the same. And now we want to see how many bits are different. For that, we use our Hamming distance component. And we have to convert here from crypt to a stream to byte array. For that, we can use a converter component. And here we say we want to have byte array. Connect this here, this here. And we need a second converter. Connect this here and here. And we need a text output for the Hamming distance value. So this is Hamming distance.
And when I now execute my workspace, since I didn't change anything here, these uh, ciphertext should be the same, so the hemming distance should be zero. And as I said, the hemming distance, of course, is zero. And now we can play around. We can, for instance, change only a single bit in the plain text. And now we see that the hemming distance is 70, which is about half of the size of our ciphertext. So we have 128 bits output of the ciphertexts and 70 bits of these texts changed. And I only changed a single bit at one of the plain texts. So this plain text one and plain text two, the only difference is this bit here. And now we can do the same. Here now we have again Hamming distance zero, I reverted the plain text and we can do the same with the key here. Now we change only a single bit in the second key and we see a change of 56 bits. And this is also about half of the bits changed and I can go on, I can also change a single bit and the Hamming distance should always be in the middle of the length of our cryptographic uh, algorithm or the output of our cryptographic algorithm. In that case, with AES 128, it should be around 64, more or less. And I can change whenever I want here my texts. And we always have a high hemming distance. And we could do this also for every other cryptographic algorithm or hash function that we have in Crypto2. So you can create this on your own and then, for instance, compare SHA-256 com with respect to the avalanche effect and the hemming distance of the outputs. And now let's have a look at our avalanche visualization that we have in Crypto2. I'm here now in the start center of Crypto2 and I want to show you our avalanche visualization. And you just search for avalanche in the start center and we have a lot of different workspaces or templates already prepared for the avalanche effect. And what I want to show you is the avalanche effect of the AES. So I open the template and here we have a really nice visualization of the avalanche effect. And we can just click here and play, then just go through the component. And here I have now two AES keys. So I have no, not two keys. I have here the message and I have the initial key, which went into the component. So I have the AES plain text, hello, everybody. That's also converted to binary. And I have our key here. And in the component, I can flip bits now. For instance, I just want to flip the last bit. I just click on enable changed single, enable to change single bits here. And then I want to flip this bit. So this bit is different. And then I say done. And now I can step through the AES cipher. So the AES cipher has different rounds here from 0 to 10 here. And in each round I can have a look how the avalanche effect, yeah, what, what is the value of the avalanche effect or what, how strong is the avalanche effect in each round. And for instance in the zeros round I only have a very a weak avalanche effect. I only have about 99.2% of the bits are the same as before and 0.8% of the bits is different due to my change. So this component takes one execution of the AES of each round and then it takes the same AES execution but with one flip bit that I did at the beginning. And now we can have a look for instance at the first round and it compares the output of these two rounds one with the changed bit and one with the unchanged bit and now we see that 77.3 percent are equal of the bits you can also here scroll through the bits of the state of the AES and here we can see that 22.7 percent of the bits are different and then I can go to the next round and here we come close to the 50% of changed bits that our strong avalanche criterion wants. And I can go through all of the different rounds and you see that after some rounds it's always around 
50%. And then in the end, I can go to the general overview. And then you see here a really nice comparison of all the rounds. And you see that on average, every round or the result of every round changed by about 50%. So every bit changed by 50%. And this also shows you that the AES has a really strong avalanche effect. Yes, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video about the avalanche effect. So each modern cipher or cryptographic hash function should have a strong avalanche effect. And you can now go, for instance, to Crypto2 and have a look at all the other templates that we have with the avalanche effect, for instance, for the DES or also for classical ciphers and hash functions. And I hope that you liked this video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. And also, I would appreciate if you subscribe to our channel. It really helps us. And thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.